To start, as always, I created some scale references. I used a simple armature with human scale, plus a traffic cone I made in my previous video. This way I had good scale and proportion from the start. Then I simply added a plane, applied a mirror modifier to duplicate in the four corners, and I started shaping the first barricade. For those little bolts, I just created one and used Alt plus D to duplicate it as an instance. This way, if I need to make changes, I only have to modify one and all the others will update automatically. It saves a lot of time when you have many duplicates. Even when it's time to UV ungrab, you only need to ungrab one and all of the instances will share the same UVs. Then, since I had planned to make another variation while keeping it similar, I took part of the first barricade to start the second one. This is one of the most important steps in the creation process of an asset pack, in my opinion. You just need to assign a vertex color to each piece of the model. This allows us to use those colors as masks in Substance Painter to apply different materials. You can always skip this step, but keep in mind you will need to rely on other masking methods in Substance Painter. There are many, but this one is my favorite. It gives a lot of freedom for masking without having to manually paint every piece with polygon fill or brush, for example. Now we are ready to start texturing. I usually begin by applying my stylized base material, which you can download for free in the description, along with other useful resources. I simply set the base color for each part to match my reference and get a quick preview of how the final result will look. There are many ways to peel off a layer, but the method I find easiest is to apply a white mask over the top material and simply paint on it to reveal the bottom layer. Just make sure to play around with filters, for example, the new anisotropic filter can give a very stylish look and help to avoid unnecessary micro details. For the metal edgeware, I use the same method as with the good. Just add a white mask and paint to rebuild the bottom layer, then I applied an anisotropic filter to smooth it and keep that clean and stylish look. Finally, I exported the texture using my Blender PBR export preset. Feel free to take a screenshot if you want to replicate it. Then in Blender, I imported the textures, organized my models and export them as FBX and OBJ. And that's it, this is the final result. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Remember, all my resources are in the description if you want to grab any of them.